Chauncey. My name is Margaret Kovach and I'm an Indigenous academic at the College of Education here at the University of Saskatchewan on uh, Treaty 6 territory and the homelands of the Métis. For such a long time, research that's been conducted that involves or impacts Indigenous people has been based upon methodologies that are really um, immersed or come from an, a Western point of view. My areas of research really focus on Indigenous methodologies and really looking at changing the culture of the Academy itself to welcome Indigenous people. I'm inspired by my graduate students who are really excited about Indigenous ways of knowing and ways of being. And I just see so much hope if we do value an uh, inclusive society, one that is interested in social justice and interested in reconciliation with Indigenous people, then we have to look seriously at indigenizing. Margaret Kovach traces her Nahia and Salto lineage to the traditional territories of the Plains Cree and Salto peoples of the Great Plains. At an early age, Kovach was adopted by an Eastern European family of Hungarian descent. Despite the potential for her foreign culture to be lost, her family raised her knowing her culture counts, as she maintained a relationship with both families. In a prologue, Kovacs reflects on her intentions within this novel, recognizing how this text shares a story of Indigenous peoples. Kovacs continues to make note of how curriculum can be a mighty tool of social justice for the marginalized. With this in mind, it is likely the foundation of Kovacs' approach in facilitating the sharing of Indigenous knowledges to come to light. Kovacs was guided to completing this text after completing her doctoral work which has become the basis for this book. Indigenous Methodologies focuses on a tribal-based approach with Cree knowledge as the guiding epistemology. Kovach chose this approach, which is based on ancient knowledges, because she felt it was the only approach that could respond to her research question. Did the methodological approach of my study work for only Cree researchers? Did this approach allow for the participation of non-Indigenous peoples? This book seeks to respond to these questions. In addition to her own contributions to the work, Kovach also incorporates contributors who share unique perspectives on topics throughout the chapters. However, despite the many contributions, Kovach remained hesitant about the potential misinterpretations, appropriations, and dismissals that often accompany Indigenous ways of knowing within the Westernized Academy. The six contributors to the book add substantial influence on the potential for Indigenous methodologies in clarification and with personal reflection to boost comprehension. Doctor of Social Work Michael Hart is of Nia ancestry from the Fish River Cree Nation in Manitoba. Doctor of Education Graham Smith is a Maori educator and is recognized as a distinguished professor of education in Auckland. Doctor of Human Ecology and Family Studies, Janine Carrier, is a Métis woman and her ancestors flow from the Red River Métis of Manitoba. Dr. Cam Willett is of Nia ancestry from Little Pine First Nation in Saskatchewan and boasts expertise from the Department of Adult Education, Community Development, and Counseling Psychology. Dr. Lara Fitzner is of Nia ancestry from Northern Manitoba and shares expertise from the Department of Adult Education, Community Development, and Counseling. Dr. Kathy Absalon is an Anishinaabe from Flying Post First Nation and speaks with expertise from the Department of Adult Education, Community Development, and Counseling Psychology. This book is separated into an easy-to-digest framework, which offers insight into specific indicators of Indigenous inquiry for those who will either use it or be in a position to access its use. Kovach describes the content as three layers or dimensions. First, situating self. Then, an introduction and context found in chapters 1, 2, and 9. 
and the conclusion, as well as the third layer, the qualities of Indigenous inquiry, found in chapters 3 to 8. Further, the book has both a prologue and an epilogue, which are personal narratives and considered outward, as mentioned by Kovach, in the sense of the entirety of the text. The framework of the book is extremely important, as it creates a process of learning and explains the context of information that is presented. Within geographical thinking, the core knowledge acts like the vocabulary, and the conceptual knowledge acts as grammar, the way we put the vocabulary together to make sense. Similar to the text, Kovach presents the core knowledge in the introduction and setting of contexts, and then allows the vocabulary to be written in sentences through the core chapters 3 through 8. Such an approach creates ease for a novice reader to grasp key concepts and theories prior to understanding their application. After an examination of the text, I would recommend the book to anyone completing or engaging in academia involving Indigenous peoples or content, as the text is not merely a guide to understanding Indigenous methodologies, but a window into a world of research and academia that offers unique perspectives on current educational ideologies. Conclusively, I have determined the book to parallel Kovach's intentions, as the well-designed chapters will guide the good intentions of any academic, working towards inclusivity of Indigenous methodological approaches in research, learning, and education. This is supported through the content within the text. To build a foundation, Chapter 1 focuses on laying out the research focus. Evidently, the most in-depth and complex chapter is the first, titled Indigenous and Qualitative Inquiry, a Round Dance, which introduces and sets the context for the remaining chapters. This chapter works to position Indigenous methodologies within a qualitative research landscape and affirms its position alongside Western qualitative paradigms. In comparative form, Kovach places Indigenous methodologies alongside Western paradigms as a valid form of inquiry. In comparison of Western and Indigenous thought, there are key epistemological differences, causing philosophical, ideological, and methodological conflicts. The core of this realization is that Indigenous methods do not flow from Western philosophy. They flow from tribal epistemologies. Such differences offer concern over how Indigenous methodologies can be appropriately incorporated in Western academia, with the foundations of Western academia being structured as a result of Western philosophy. The second chapter builds upon the first, speaking to the title, Creating Indigenous Research Frameworks, by depicting an epistemological framework based upon Plains Cree knowledge used by Kovach within her doctoral research. Explaining the necessity of conceptual frameworks in research, Kovach furthers the discussion when referring to the specific use of indigenous base frameworks. The framework explained within the chapter utilizes holistic epistemology, story, purpose, the experiential, tribal ethics, tribal ways of gaining knowledge, and an overall consideration of the colonial relationship. The framework was constructed to mirror a standard research design similar to qualitative researchers. As you can see, there are similarities between westernized approaches to research, prompting the validity and credibility for integration into Western academia, yet an indigenous foundation to ensure ties to the plain screen knowledge. It is also noticed that the framework does not follow a linear or directional path, rather it offers fluidity in the approach and pathways. The core of the text, chapters 3 to 8, focus on application of indigenous methodologies based on the contextual setting Kovach depicts. First, the book discusses epistemology and research, focusing on centering tribal knowledge. In conversation with Dr. Michael Hart, Kovach focuses on how indigenous epistemologies are applied to research choices and design. Specifically, Hart discusses epistemology in how tribal knowing is a distinctive indigenous approach when applied to a research method. Connections are made to indigenous ways of knowing and place, 
as well as the integration of holistic knowledge into research. Application of this understanding into research practice allows for complex and comprehensive dissection of research questions to create a more complex result in research. As well, Kovach connects decolonization to the use of Indigenous research frameworks, arguing that the integration of a decolonizing theory positions Indigenous inquiry as resistant research. This component of the text is quite interesting, as collaboration from Dr. Graham Smith develops the argument that attempting to move forward with Indigenous research frameworks without acknowledgement of colonial residue inherent in Western education and research processes will not bring the required substantive change. A foundational argument from Smith is that language cannot fully grasp worldviews, in that Cree concepts cannot fully be described in translation. As a result, the loss of meaning suggests that true translation is impossible at this time. This perspective ties into the idea that language is at the heart of Indigenous revitalization and resurgence. Within the fifth chapter, Kovach describes perhaps the most practical component of the material, story as Indigenous methodology. Kovach identifies the deep connections between knowing, story, and research, and how story is an Indigenous research method. Detailing how story is not a culturally neutral form of expression, Kovach offers the opportunity for all researchers to employ this method into practice. Descriptively, Kovach states that stories remind us of who we are and of our belonging. Stories hold with them knowledges while simultaneously signifying relationships. In oral tradition, stories can never be decontextualized from the teller. Story also plays an important role within qualitative research methodologies, proving that story is not unique to Indigenous knowledge systems. Rather, story is practiced within methodologies valuing contextualized knowledges, such as feminism, autoethnography, phenomenology, and narrative inquiry. These stories then support Indigenous revitalization and resurgence, as they are high-valued, purposeful, and inspiring to generations, while supporting the strength of the culture. Adding to the recognition of how Indigenous methodologies fit into research, the core content moves toward the idea of situating the self, within culture and within the purpose of Indigenous inquiry. Here the reader will most deeply engage with the self, recognizing self-location and the role of self-location within resistant research. Touching on other forms of anti-oppressive research methodologies, this section provides methods to capturing location, grounding, and purpose through the use of portfolios and journals. These methods tie into the final chapters, which draw on interpretation and ethics. Essentially, the book identifies the choices that are made and the rationales that follow. It is crucial to identify these details, as accountability is a key component within Indigenous research methodologies. Accountability is supported by good research or good relations, as described through the Cree term that acts as the heartbeat of ethical responsibilities within Indigenous research practice. As an Indigenous or non-Indigenous researcher, ethical congruency is extremely important, as it lessens the unavoidable tensions. Four key principles are proposed by Kovach to engage in non-exploitive research practices, ownership, control, access, and possession. Ownership assumes that a community owns cultural knowledge or data collectively. Control asserts that First Nations people have a right to control various aspects of research on them. Access is the ability for Indigenous people to retrieve and examine data that concerns them and their communities. The principle of possession refers to the actual possession of data. In westernized and global academia, these principles draw upon key concerns as research of Indigenous peoples and content can easily resist the triangulation that would include Indigenous peoples in the research process. When reflecting on this text, I go back to the purpose of the book and Kovach's intentions. She reflects on a premise found in Nihia Epistemology, which is about giving back to the community. 
and how as researchers we can do this by sharing our work so that it can assist others. Kovacs's doctoral dissertation was an exploration of ways in which Indigenous academic researchers have incorporated culture into their research methodology. Kovacs's findings were the basis of this book. The incorporation and review of the contributors within her work shows that many Indigenous peoples recognize that for their cultural knowledge to thrive, it must live in many sites, including Western education and research. Seemingly contradictory to decolonization, it is an adaptation that is proving successful. Kovacs determines that this is not only providing another environment where Indigenous knowledge can survive, but live within and change the nature of academia itself. Thus, indigenous methodologies disrupt methodological homogeneity in research. While this text is not conclusive, it does support the ongoing transformation of academia and growth of indigenous knowledges, equating current situational circumstance due to the ongoing nature, qualities, practices, and politics of indigenous methodologies. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my review of Margaret Kovacs' Indigenous Methodologies. As mine have, I hope your understandings of Indigenous methodologies, their context within research, and potential have grown. Thank you for watching. Miigwech.